Hey guys, Adam here with yet another video for you today. And we are actually in my game room. Can you believe that? I don't think I've ever done a video of my game room, and for good reason, and you'll see in a minute. And so, this is my game room. Um, you've probably seen pictures of it in the past when John did a, a video on the X-Men. Uh, and I think I might have pictures on my website of me, you know, doing the whole painting and all that business. So you can go on uh, online and check that out, onecircuit.com. But anyway, let's do a little tour here, and you guys can, um, we'll quickly see what my issues are. Um, so anyway, this is my little uh, switch panel. Um, my father uh, is actually an electrical contractor, so I grew up doing electrical work my whole life entirely, pretty much. And uh, so each, each outlet in the entire room has its own little switch. So that makes it very convenient. I can just label all my games, and then I can turn them on and off and whatever. So anyway, here's a couple of pins that I have. Um, this is a Roadshow. That was actually the first pin I ever got. This is a Shadow on loan from Mark. Um, this guy I picked up in a trade, I think. Lucky Strike. Uh, I got my Neo Geo. Uh, a couple of Namco Classics here. Centipede. This is my console corner. And so this is just like an old retro console TV. I love these TVs. And I have an old couch here. This is actually um, was my wife's couch growing up. And so when we were dating, we would sit on this couch and watch movies and everything. So it's very nostalgic for me. So I kept the couch, and it's in this little corner here. We would play console games, NES, Atari, and all that good stuff. Uh, what else we got? We got a lot of junk here. Make note of the junk, okay? It's got to come up in a second here. Tons of junk. We've got a uh, air hockey table. We've got a massive Ghostbusters uh, sign here. This was actually a display for the new Ghostbusters movie. I went to the movie theater and asked the guy if I could have it when they were done, and he graciously agreed, and so this is probably going to end up going... I don't know, maybe on the ceiling or maybe up here. Maybe I'll move those stickers. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Got a few more games over here. Operation Wolf, Asteroids. What do we got? Mr. Do, Heavy Barrel, Donkey Kong, of course. Asteroids Deluxe, Tempest, X-Men. Uh, we got a pool table, a little foosball thing. So anyway, uh, why am I showing you this room now? Well, this room has uh, been a big problem for me for a long time. And it's kind of ironic because it's actually a really nice size, and it would make a great game room. The problem is this is the only room up until recently that I had. And so what I mean is if games that I would purchase that worked fine, they would come up here and I would put them in the row. Games that were projects and needed work, I would bring them up and put them in the row. And games that were needed to be worked on cosmetically, whether it be Bondo or Sanding, whatever, then they, I would do all that in this room. This was the only room that I've had for the longest time. Um, and that's a problem, right? Because you want this to be clean and this is, should be, you know, presentable and it's not. And so recently I think I, I showed you my other video. I got a trailer. Uh, we'll see that in a second. That's kind of out back here for all my projects. So that's awesome because that means all of these things can go. Any games in this row that are, that are technically projects that don't work, they can go. And then I can just have finished games uh, in this game room. Um, so that's one of the problems that I think I have uh, nailed down and, and solved. The other problem, and we'll go over here, you'll see real quick, is that this game room is on the second floor of my house, okay? So this is above the garage, and the only way to get games into this room historically is through that set of double doors. And if you look at some of my older videos on YouTube from my other account, I'll just probably show them here so it's easier for you guys. Um, my brother-in-law, or my father-in-law, rather, um, would use their... Uh, their backhoe and they would lock into a set of forks and then they would just feed games right in through this door um, which was nice because it required very little work uh, physical work the problem was if I ever got a game or wanted to get rid of the game I had to call them up they had to bring the machine down and they would wreck my lawn and everything else and so it was a big hassle so I always had aspirations of building a deck out here and so last year uh, I finally had some free time and then over the course of many many uh, weekends I built the deck. And so let's go out here and take a peek. And I actually think I have pictures of the deck being built. Uh, so let me go ahead and start a little montage for you.
So anyway, this is the deck. And we just take a step out. If I can unlock this here. You guys get a little glimpse here. And so yeah, so this will work out quite nicely for bringing up games. You guys can kind of see my ramp. This is where John and I spend a lot of our time on the half pipe there. And then that's the trailer way over there where I um, basically have all my storage, project games and whatnot. So this is great, right? I mean, this is huge because now I can get games up in here. The problem is it's very, very lengthy, right? Because we're up probably a good 12 feet or so. And so I still have the problem of if I wanted to get a game in by myself, it's pretty inconvenient. I'd have to have some friends over. Well, that, that, I guess that's the thing, right? I can't bring up games by myself. I have to invite friends over and we have to go ahead and hoist them up here, you know, physically and then wheel them in. And so that's kind of inconvenient. I want to be able to do this on my own. I want to be completely independent, bring home, go on a Craigslist run or something, bring a game home, bring it up here somehow, stick it in the game room and be done with it. Or if there's a game that I'm selling or the game that I need to bring out and put it in storage, I can send it down here, put it in storage, give it to the guy, whatever, and be totally independent. And so that's my plan. I have to figure out a way to make that possible. And so why don't we go down to the lab where we have the whiteboard and we can kind of brainstorm some ideas of how we might be able to make this possible. All right, so here's a little sketch of the deck and the stairs and we can kind of use this uh, as a means to go through some ideas that I've had in my head. So what I'm thinking is to create some sort of winch system, some way to use a winch and a cable to get the games from down here to up here. And so I've been looking through, you know, what people have done in the past on the web and things like that. And uh, the first thing that jumps out at me is uh, what's called a spa wench. And I'll probably throw a picture up here so you guys can get the basic idea. A spa wench is basically just a, it's a frame, a metal frame with a winch attached. And you can secure it to the top of a deck. And it's used to bring up spas, right? And so if I were to kind of draw that here, you know, in well, isometric kind of form, it looks something like this, okay? And it's got, I don't know, it's got a, a post that comes up with a winch. And I think it's got some chains that come down to kind of secure it. And the basic idea is you plop this thing up on your deck and then you take some tie straps and you strap the thing down to, uh, to the joist that runs underneath okay, the deck. And in my case, I really don't want to have to use a hand wench. I would like to have an electric wench. And so that's fine. Maybe instead of the hand wench that's you know, shown here, maybe we can put a, you know, an electric wench here and then have the cable come up and then go down the deck. Um, and I've been watching some videos, and in the most part, I mean, it, it makes sense, and it seems to be pretty successful. The problem is that most spas are only a few feet tall. So if you were to you know, envision a spa being laid on the deck here, it would look something like this. Maybe it's two, three feet tall, or something like that. Um, what I want to be able to do is, when I get the game to the top, is to stand this thing fully upright, and have the, the wench do you know, all of that work. And so if I'm able to do that and we, you know, picture myself standing here, ideally I should have drawn this probably over there, right? But if I'm standing here and the game is next to me, and again, this picture this slid over so that this thing will be safely on the deck, this post would have to be much, much higher, right? This post would have to be way up here so that by the time it gets up here, I can continue to use the power of the wench to stand this game upright so that I can then wheel it into the garage, uh, into the game room rather. What concerns me is the height of this thing, right? And so this thing is going to be, I don't know, I'm six feet tall. Uh, most of these games are getting close to that. And so this would have to be quite a few feet higher than, I don't know, maybe eight, nine feet or something. I don't know, depending on the angle. And so that part, you know, worries me a little bit. Um, the other part that worries me is that by the time I'm done fabricating this thing, it's going to be pretty big and it's going to be pretty heavy. This is going to be steel construction. It's going to have this wench in here, which is heavy in and of itself. And so by the time I'm done, this thing is going to weigh a considerable amount. So I have to lug this thing up, put it on the deck, and then lug it down when I'm done. The other thing that stinks is that to secure this to the deck, uh, you use tie straps under the deck. Well, my deck is like 10, 12 feet in the air. And so how am I going to crawl underneath and fish tie straps? Again, I want to do this by myself, not have to ask help, not to, not to be up here you know, while my a buddy fishes up the tie strap and then I secure it. I don't want to have to deal with any of that. So all those things are kind of making me think, uh, eh, this is maybe not the way to go. Uh, from safety reasons, you know, this cable is going to be pretty much right by my face. And as I'm bringing this thing up, you know, God forbid something catastrophically happens, this cable breaks, it's going to be right next to my face. 
And these things are not foolproof, you know, things have, bad things have happened in the past. So I'm thinking this might not be the way to go. Um, but I do like the idea, I do like the concept of having a winch do all the work and, and all that kind of stuff. So I, I do want to take advantage of that. So what I'm thinking actually is, uh, and let me just get rid of some of this here, draw in my floor joists. What I'm thinking is, um, if I can have a winch system on here somewhere out of the way, that's, a, that's a, you know, safely out of the way, not by my face, um, then that would be great. And so what I'm thinking is maybe have the winch system back this side of the deck over here and it'll be mounted I don't know maybe between a couple of floor jays maybe I can you know get some steel and fabricate some kind of bracket so I'm use a different color here fabricate some kind of bl uh, bracket rather that will just sit in this cavity okay and if I can fabricate something that sits in this cavity and then I can bolt in between these joists and then I can have you know basically this thing mounted here so what about this? Well, my game is sitting, you know, on a dolly. Let's draw our little dolly here. So this is a dolly, and this is our game sitting like this. How do I get this thing up? Well, I can probably mount some kind of uh, a pulley or a rolly thing, something here, that the cable can then go across, hit this guy, and then go all the way down and then secure it somehow to the dolly. I haven't figured out where I want to do it or whatever, but this thing is secure to my dolly, and I can wheel this thing up. Now, how do, you know, I don't want this thing to kind of just flop up on the deck like this. I want it to actually come right up into my hands. And so I think if I were to mount this as, as low as possible, then even though this thing is already up here and wanting to fall, flop over, I can be there holding, you know, holding the, the front end of this dolly, and the cable is at the very lowest point of, of the dolly. I should be able to still use the wench to power this thing up right into my hands. And so that's what I'm hoping. I think this will be safer. You know, I'll be standing this way, you know, like this. Of course, if that thing lets go, it's going to be right next to my junk. But, you know, maybe, maybe we can put some kind of a mat here to keep this thing from, from going up. I'm not really too concerned about it. I've, I've thought about the physics a little bit and where the weight's going to be distributed and how much this thing is actually going to be pulling up. And I don't think it's going to be that much. I think it'll be about 50% of, you know, the weight of a, of a typical uh, cabinet. So these are the ideas I'm thinking of. You know, maybe, maybe I'll go a different route. Maybe as I start to construct this thing, I'll realize, eh, maybe I should do something different or tweak this or that. And that's fine. That's kind of my MO when, I, when I've just kind of, you know, designed this kind of stuff. But this is kind of where I'm at. So I tell you what, while, while we're still, or while I'm still playing with this idea, why don't I start ordering the, the uh, you know, the necessity components like the winch and then maybe this thing. Uh, I think I have a dolly on hand that I can use for this project and anything else that comes to mind. That'll take some time to come in, so why don't I go ahead and order that. I'll think about this some more, and then when these parts come in, we can revisit this and then see what we want to do. Okay, so we're back here on the deck, and we got some stuff in the mail. So let's take a look at what we got. So the first thing we have here, of course, is our winch. And this is a Super Winch uh, UT3000, which can pull, theoretically, 3,000 pounds, which is way more than what we need, all right? I mean, if this is... I think this probably is a 45 degree angle, so if you throw a game on there that's 300 pounds, you're looking half that, right? 150 pounds. Um, but really, you know, the reason I got this primarily was because of the price. I actually found it on eBay for steel. It was brand new. The guy wanted like 75, 80 bucks for it, so I grabbed it. So this will be our winch. Um, one thing I like about it is this long control, and so I can have the winch set up, you know, in this corner of the deck. And I can be standing over here, keeping an eye on the game, and, and use a little control and bring it up or down. Um, what else? Here's their little bracket that they give us, and so that'll probably mount right there. And what I want to do is fabricate a metal, uh, you know, metal frame that I can mount underneath and, and bolt it to these joists, and then I can drill some holes into uh, the wood here. And then when I want to lift up a game, I just bolt the whole winch down. I can move the game up, and then when I'm done unbolt it and, and move this away and that bracket down there will be permanent, it'll stay there. Uh, the other thing that we had to figure out uh, was how we're going to handle this edge here because I don't want to just run the cable off the side of the stairs here, it'll chew into the wood. And so I figured I would do some googling and research because I know when uh, guys are pulling cable, you know, telecommunication or whatever in construction, they got to run into this kind of stuff, right? And so. Um, I did see some cool ideas online on things that were kind of custom fabricated for, for this kind of a purpose. 
um, but it was pretty pricey, you know, figuring out how I was going to do something like that. And I talked to my cousin who's a machinist and, and the first thing that came to his mind was a keel roller or a bow roller for a boat. And so I found this on eBay for like 25, 30 bucks. And I think it's going to do just fine. This is exactly what we're looking for, right? It's tapered, so the cable will stay centered. It's adjustable. It's got some bolt holes here and it comes, you know, complete. Roller plus the bracket, the whole nine yards. So if we come over here, what I'm thinking is I can put a, just a filler strip right here and then bolt this in place. And then that way when I'm done, if I want to, same, same deal with that, right? If I, if I want to take that thing off, I can unbolt this as well and then put it away. So that's that. And what else? We have our dolly down here. And this thing is ancient. This is actually my father-in-law's dolly that I'm, I've borrowed for, I think, over 10 years now. <laughs> so this is probably what I'll use to move the games up and down. I thought that I might be able to just lay it on the on the treads themselves since this is just a smooth surface in the back. But if you look, the wheels are offset, right? And so as it goes up, it's like bam, 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 bam. So I don't think it's gonna work. What I may do is just take some decking and run it up and down two runs um, and maybe put some separations in the decking with some hinges so I can kind of collapse it on itself and, and stow it away. Again, everything I want to be like be able to disassemble everything. Decking is just, you know, this kind of stuff right here, nice and thin. And then I think that'll be great because then the wheels will just stay on the decking and then this part will stay on the upper part of decking and it'll just slide right up. So, if we look down here, this is where I'm thinking we're going to end up putting that bracket. So I just need to make a couple measurements and then machine something that will, or fabricate rather, something that will fit there. Um, luckily my brother-in-law owns a a construction shop and he's got welders and grinders and all sorts of fun toys and so why don't we take some of this stuff over we'll make some measurements of course and then we'll run over to the shop and then do some fabricating all right we're at the shop and this is the corner where we're gonna be working so you can see he's got all sorts of cool stuff he's got the chop saw here he's got a cutting torch which we won't be needing and then he's got the welder and so That'll be what we're going to be doing here. So I bought some angle iron here, which is about the same thickness as the uh, as the bracket itself. And so I figured, you know, my joists are going in this direction, right? So I figured I'd do a run there, a run there, and then here and here, and then we'll line this up nicely. So yeah, so I want to get the tripod set up, and I can uh, make some measurements. We'll do some cutting, and then weld up our bracket. Actually, I figured I would talk through some of the stuff with you guys. So. My holes are here, and I figure that I want to drill into the center of this, right? And I think this is probably two inch piece. Yeah, that's a two inch piece. So that means if my holes are centered with my bracket, then I need an inch on each side. So what is this? This is, looks like seven and a quarter. I'm sorry, I don't want to measure the whole bracket. I just want to measure from the holes, because the holes are going to be centered. Six and a half, plus an inch on each side, that's eight and a half times two. So, 8.5 uh, times 2 gives us, whoops, 8.5 times 2, not divided by 2, 17. So it's 17 inches I'm going to use up in this just for those brackets going across. What do I have left over? I think it's a 36 inch piece. 36. We've got 19 divided by 2. 9.5 inches left over. Okay, nine and a half, nine and a half. I think that's going to be fine. I didn't measure it, and it's like ten and three quarters. But I've got two inches worth of room here to to play, right? When I weld this up, the bracket's going to be like that, and I can slide these up and down and figure out where I want to uh, weld them. So I'm going to go ahead and start with cutting these guys first, and then I'll, whatever's remaining, I'll just chop it in half, and then we can size it all up and weld it together.
So you kind of see how this thing is going to take shape. We just have a couple that go this way, a couple this way, and this thing is going to set right in the middle and you can see the holes are centered here and that's exactly what we want. And so by having it this way, this is adjustable, right? I can slide it in and out, I can slide this side in and out until the overall length is what, 10 and 3 quarters I think is what we want. So it's pretty close. But once it's 10 and 3 quarters, right, I can mark it and then I can weld it and then that way it'll be all set. So why don't I start getting these clamps together and the welders all set to go and then we can do some welding. All right, just setting up for my first weld. So the way this works is for people who aren't familiar with welding is, you know, you're basically going to send a, a huge amount of current through this piece of metal, right? And it's going to fuse them together. And so you got to create a circuit. And so you're going to hook up the ground clamp and then you uh, basically weld with this end and it's sending current through, you know, through the metal, through the ground clamp, back into the welder and so on and so forth. Now I want to just say right now, I am not a professional welder. All right, I'm just going to put that out in the open. So keep that in mind as you watch me weld. Well, what do you think? Not bad at all. So rinse and repeat for the rest. Okay, so we're all done, not too bad. A couple high spots and I just ground them down, but overall, pretty good. I actually just threw it in the water because this thing gets insanely hot as you can imagine when you're welding, so just to cool it down so I can handle it. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do now, well actually we should check, double check everything. It's too late now, but I already did, but yeah, so it's 10 and 3 quarter, 10 and 3 quarter, and then this guy, perfectly centered. That's what we want. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, center this, mark out and drill my holes, and then what I'm actually going to do is take a washer and a bolt and I'm going to weld it on the bottom. Okay, And that is because when I'm from the top right, and I want to bolt this thing down, I'm not going to be able to climb underneath the deck and, and put the washer and the bolt on. So I want this to be permanently on this, and then that way from, the, from uh, on top I can just take my bolts and bolt them on, and use the winch, unbolt them, and all set to go. So why don't we take this over to the drill press, well we'll mark some holes, we'll take it over to the drill press, drill it out, weld it, and then go from there.
check our work. So this should sit right like that. Hopefully everything lines up correctly. Very nice. So now we just need to weld on the washer and the bolts. And these bolts are, I'm sorry, the washer and the nuts. These bolts are rather long, and so what I'm going to do is just pull this off. I have a little spacer here that I found in the shop, so I can stick it through like that, flip it over, put a washer and a nut on here, like so. Here we go. So that's secured. I can tack it, tack it, take the bolt out, and then do the other four. So my biggest concern is not melting this thing because this metal, you know, is much thinner than this stuff. So I had the welder on the absolute lowest setting. We'll see how she goes. That's not bad. I missed. All right, success. It took a while. I had to really fiddle with the voltage to get the right amount, and they'd look ugly as anything, but they're totally secured, and that's all I really care about. So I think that's going to do it for now. It's actually nighttime here, and so I'm going to head home, and then uh, maybe we'll pick this up in the morning. So it's Sunday, about 3 o'clock. The sun's already going down. I'm going to try to get a little bit of work done on this today. So it dawned on me that I didn't drill these holes. Uh, it would have been nice to mark them out and use my drill press ahead of time, uh, but I forgot to do that, so it's not a big deal. I have a portable drill here. Not a portable, but you know, just a handheld drill that I can use. So I already did three. I figured I'd show you guys how I do the last one here. Um, whenever I drill through steel like this, you know, obviously you have to have a bit that's designed to do that. At the same time, you want to keep uh, your bit cool because you'll just burn out your bit. And so I just use uh, any kind of oil, really. I guess this is what three in one oil that I use. So you drill a little bit, you know, add some oil just to keep that drill bit cool, and then just keep going, rinse and repeat. Um, the other thing, too, is I don't know what RPM setting this is, but typically with hardened steel, um, you know, you don't want to drill too fast. You can drill fast through soft materials and you want to drill slow through hardened materials. And so, um, I think I probably have to nurse this bit a little bit, nurse the drill rather a little bit as I'm going through this hole just to keep things under control. I did tap this so there should be a little mark here where the bit will center. Let's see if I can get this guy going. Just to move on me. There it is. I think that's it for this. I'm going to clean it all up, prime it, paint it, because it is going to be sitting underneath the deck and expose the elements, and so I don't want it to rust and everything. So let me do that, and then we'll move on to those runners that lead up the deck. So I measured, and the overall length of the stringers here is about 17 feet or so. So I'll round it up to 18. I have a bunch of six-footers here, and I can make a couple of uh, runners. 
And so I have them in stacks of three, which makes sense, right? Six times three is 18. And what I want to do is I bought a bunch of these little hinges here. And so I want to take a couple of hinges, we'll say maybe one there and then one here. And on the other side, right, if we go over on this side and I mount them down below, one here and one here, then it'll be like an accordion style, right? I can kind of lay it out, I can unfold it rather and put it on the uh, stairs and then fold it up and then put it away, you know, in the garage or something like that when I'm done. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, the only thing is that these have to be true, right? And so we're good here, but this end you can see we're kind of not true. So I'm just going to square it up with that and then we'll go ahead and put on our hinges. All right, so here's a pro tip. So if you guys recall, when I welded on the washers and the nuts on the bottom here, I took a bolt, I had a spacer, um, you know, bolted it on together and then welded it. What I should have done was just bought smaller bolts for the purpose of temporarily mounting this onto this bracket and then doing the weld. Because by doing one at a time, um, it caused this to not line up perfectly, which is understandable because, you know, there's some play in these holes that we drilled out so things can move a little bit and so I had to actually take a file here and just kind of gently you know go in and expand elongate some of these holes just a smidge to get it to fit perfectly and that's just wasted time right if I had smaller bolts I could have just you know bolted this on flipped it over welded all these at the same time and it would have been it would have fit perfectly so so that's my uh, my fault there but everything seems to be lining up perfectly now so we should be able to mount this guy no problem so the next thing we want to do is figure out where we're going to mount our bracket. So here's our little bracket, it's all painted up, ready to be mounted, and we're going to stick it somewhere in this general area. Now what I want to do is center it with my stairs, right, because what I want is, if we come down here, you can think of it this way, I want a perfectly straight shot from the center of this stairway to wherever that pulley is going to be. I don't want it to be any kind of weird angle or anything like that put extra pressure on that roller that's going to be here. We want a straight shot. So what I need to do is figure out where the center is of this landing here. So let me grab my tape. And I already know, let me grab this too while we're at it. I already know the width of this is about 42 inches. So if we come off the side here, let me see if I can do this with one hand, about 21 inches. And we're looking about right in here, somewhere in here. This is hard to do left-handed. Now I already took and marked the center of my bracket, all right? And so 
you would think that wherever I end up here, I'm just going to follow it all the way down and mount my bracket. That's not really true. And here's why. So there's the center of this bracket. There's the center mark. Now let's look at the bracket for the winch itself. We throw that on top like that. You'll notice that this is offset. All right, so the center of the spool is not directly in, you know, with respect to these holes in the center of this bracket. It's actually off like a half an inch or three quarters of an inch. So what I want to do actually is figure out where the center is of the, uh, the, this mark here and line it up with this mark, not this mark. So this is obviously going to come over a smidge, figure out where everything lines up here, and then transpose that over to that area underneath. So let's just see how this thing is going to fit. I actually have not dry fit this yet, so I'm curious to see. I hope I didn't make it too big. So, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, where am I going, right here? All right, this thing's kind of heavy, so let me see if I can position it properly. And, oh good, okay, so we are not too big. We are a little short, but that's okay. Um, I can put a piece of filler there. What I was worried about is accidentally making it a smidge too big and then just, you know, what are you going to do? It's, it's welded. You can't really change any of that. But this is fine. So I can shim that. And what I think I'm also going to do is put in some blocking here. So let me step down so you can kind of see what I'm thinking. So this thing is going to sit right there. And all of the weight is going to be in this direction, right? We're going to be pulling with a cable. And the only two members that are going to be supporting that weight are these two guys right here. It'd be nice if I could get these guys to join in. So what I want to do is put some blocking here so that as the weight is getting pulled, these are all, you know, under under load or whatever. And that way it'll just make it much stronger. It's probably overkill for an arcade game or a pinball machine. But I have a pool table up there. And who knows, you know, five years from now, I may decide that I want to just get rid of that thing to make room for more games. And so that's like a thousand pound uh, pool table. And so by putting that blocking in there, It'll allow me to move much, much heavier things. So right now we just have this loosely sitting here. Of course, this is going to get pushed, you know, up flush. Um, what I want to do now is actually drill in this direction with a pilot hole so that I can come back on the top and drill down with a paddle bit. Paddle bits are great going in. They look nice. But on the way out, there's tear out. And so if I just uh, go up right now, you know, I, I mark these with a pencil, but I'm not really going to use that information. If I go up, uh, if I take this bracket off and I go up with a paddle bit, it'll just bust out on the top and I really don't want that. I want it to kind of look nice on the top. So let me just do a little pilot hole and then I'll go back on the top and come down with a paddle bit and then it'll look nice and clean. We are almost ready to mount this sucker. There's one more hole I gotta drill. So here's our plate, right? This is gonna sit here. Here's our winch. It's gonna go on top. There is a bolt. There's actually two bolts. And that's actually, that's that's weird as I think about this because, you know, this is supposed to withstand 3,000 pounds and the only thing securing this to this is two bolts. I don't know. But anyway, um, <laughs> I'll just trust them that they know what they're doing. So this is the bolt that goes through here and it's going to go through here, but there's wood right there, right? And so what I need to do is figure out what bit would fit this and it's probably something like a 3 8 
that looks like that would fit right there. So I'm just going to take and drill a 3 8 hole, mark this. That way when I, when I mount this to this um, and I plop it into place, that bolt will be recessed within the decking here. Okay, so let's check our work. So this should fall into place, something like that. And I don't have the bracket in underneath. I, of course, removed the bracket to uh, prevent myself from damaging my bit when I went down. But I can put that back in place. I just want to make sure that these bolts line up. Why am I missing two bolts? Here they are. Look at that. Beautiful. So that's it. I put the bracket in underneath. I can bolt this down if I want to take this off, undo four bolts. That's it. All right, let's put the bracket in place, and then I can mount this winch. Well, what do you think? Like a glove. Thing bolted in there perfectly. Now, you'll note that I did undo all the screws on this joist, and I was thinking about it as I was bolting it down below, just dry fitting it. If I were to unscrew all of these uh, for this joist, then it would have a little bit of give, and sure enough, I undid these, and then as I was bolt, doing the final, you know, bolting down below, this guy came in an eighth of an inch, perfect. I didn't need to shim or any of that business. So let's go down real quick and we'll take a look at our work. And this is exhausting going up and down these stairs all day. But I have my blocking all finished up there, you can see. And then we'll take a quick close-up look on the bracket. And you can see here, no gap. Came in perfectly, bolted in, lined up perfectly. So I think we are all set. So, home stretch, what is left? We have to hook up our roller. And the roller, look at that, I'm already out of breath climbing up and down all these stairs. So the roller is gonna end up right here. I just kind of threw it there temporarily. I already put my piece of, uh, whatever you want to call it, just a piece of scrap here to offset this. And this is as low as it'll go, which is actually pretty, perfect the way it is because if you look it's just a hair over our landing and that's what we want now what I planned on doing was putting what's called T-nuts behind here and these are T-nuts and T-nuts have these little teeth and they grip in the back of the framing and that way I can put the bolt in and then take it out when I'm done and it's you know very easy to um, put this thing on and off they do not have these or they did not have these at the store in my size they have the bolts for these so I'm just going to use nuts and washers for now, and I'll, I'll source these some other place. So anyway, let's line this guy up, and we'll drill him in place. And then I think all we have to do is put some finishing touches, the brackets, the rollers in front of the winch, and then we should be good to go. All secured, nice and locked in there. And I also took the liberty of setting up the battery. <clears throat> so it comes here with uh, these terminals and a little inline fuse so that it doesn't get overloaded. Um, and yeah, well, what else do we got? We got our little control here. So theoretically, we should be able to plug this in. Let's see, plug in our remote. This thing is keyed, right? So can we go one way? Something like this. And then, nice. wow, that thing is loud, huh? <laughs> so, why don't I clean up this mess? This is our little staging area. And then we can move a game. What do you think we should do? Should we move a game up or down? I'm kind of thinking maybe we should take one of these lightweight Nintendo cabs that I've been having in here for a while and bring one down. That way, if something catastrophically goes wrong, it's not a big loss, but if I bring up like one of my you know, games in the garage, like the Double Dragon or something, if that were to go you know, end over end, boy, I would feel horrible. So maybe we'll do that. I will clean up this mess. We'll get the dolly all set up. We'll bring it up here, get my ramps in place. We'll load up a uh, Nintendo cab, an empty Nintendo cab, and we'll give it a shot. OK, 
Okay, something tells me that this is going to be, you know, a work in progress. I'll have to figure out, I'll dial it in my process. Uh, let's pull this out so that I can get it free spinning. And let's figure out something like, something like that maybe. Okay, put it back into lock mode, and let's hook up our there. Okay, this is scary. Let's throw this on the other side, and let's see if we can line this up. strap. You guys probably can't see this. Let me grab the camera so you can see. I have my tie downs. This is working out great. I have my tie downs here. So I think I'm actually going to pull it up and I'll hook them here so that they're not rubbing against the wood. But this is looking pretty cool so far. So let me back this out and I will adjust my tie downs here. my tie downs. Okay, I got these repositioned and the cable's adjusted. Let's try it again. Out of my way. Stepping on the cable here. Make sure I'm centered. And let's see. That's not bad. These boards can come in a little bit, but it's looking good so far. All right, down she goes. seeing is that as it goes down it moves a little bit the uh, it's actually so slick that it's kind of moving off to the side so I may have to put not sure how I do that because these are like accordion style I was gonna say I'll put a little edge on here so that it'll run up against this but I don't see how I could do that and then have it still be collapsible anyway let me just go ahead and drop this down we'll see how it continues to go and then figure out what I want to do. I wonder if I could just set the camera right here, maybe? 
Uh, spin it this way. Let's see. Ah, this little tripod thing is not holding up very well. There we go. Let's try that. Grab this camera. So success, I think, right? We got it down. I'm really gonna have to figure out what to do about these runners because it does seem like it wants to go one way or the other. And it could be just, you know, if this thing is a hair off these stringers, then it's gonna want to favor one side. So I'm kind of wondering if it's better for me to secure something here. Actually, that's not a bad idea. If I could weld something or secure something here, a guide, that will run on the inside of these. I'm not sure. I'll have to think about that some more. But, I mean, we got it down, and I got it down by myself, right? Which I could not do uh, in any other circumstance. So, I'll tell you what. Why don't I hook up. I think we're ready. <laughs> I'll hook up the double dragon, and then we'll try going up. And I may have to do the same thing, kind of nurse it along the way and make sure it stays straight on the track. But uh, that's the end goal, right? Let's see if we can get a game up the stairs. Alright, so we switched to double dragon. We're going to move it up. I got a cameraman, which makes it easy for me because now I have two hands. So we're going to come back here. You can come over here. I'm going to come back here and hook up my little thing to the axle like we did before. And one thing I think I might do is make an extension for the controls because it's way up there, as you can see. And I would love to be able to snug it up and then get it ready to be sent up. So anyway, let's see how this works. This is considerably heavier than my junior cab because the junior cab was gutted. But we'll see. So if we just gently put this guy down. Make sure I'm on my boards here. Get out of the way. All right. Lose this. And let's give it a shot.
Pick up our slack. And I'm going to get out of the way of the cable here because if this thing lets go, it's going to go let go of my face. I'm actually going to stand up here. It's already going off the edge there. That's what I was worried about. So I'm going to have to invent something to keep it on its rails. It's not a big deal. I can always adjust it. It's actually very, there's not much weight to it, which is what we suspected, right? Half the weight is about what we figured, so it's only 100 pounds or so. Try it again. Actually went pretty smooth. A little bit of sketchiness with the boards, but all in all, it worked pretty well. Mission accomplished. I lost my cameraman, but I came and went. <laughs> anyway, that was pretty flawless. I think for the most part, a little bit of weirdness, like I said. Um, not sure what to do about this. I got about a three-inch rise on there, and these wheels are really not meant for that, um, and that's going to be a hindrance. I really like these kind of dollies with the you know, the uh, pneumatic wheels. I don't know, maybe there's a way to retrofit this and have some pneumatic wheels on it. But I think I can at least, you know, muscle this into the door and get in the game room. But yeah, this thing's worked out really, really well. And I think I'm gonna leave it like here for now. Like I said, I designed it to be portable, removable anyway, so that I can use it on the basement stairs if I need to. But um, I, I found this bin. I think I'm just gonna cover this up for now. And then that way I can, you know, it's here. Might as well use it, clean out the garage, put stuff into storage. And then get everything, um, you know, where, where it needs to be. So, yeah, I'm very, very pleased. So, tell you what, why don't we go back into the lab for a little wrap-up, and then we'll finish out this video. So, what do you guys think? Pretty cool, huh? Uh, I actually, uh, before I came down to record this, I moved a few more games up into the game room, and I think I have it down to a science. What I realized is that in the last uh, step or two, I can actually hold the controller in my hand as I'm holding onto the dolly. And so I don't know if I did this in, with the Double Dragon game, but these last few games, I did that, and um, I didn't have to muscle it at all, like the last step. It literally was just right up onto the deck, and then I was able to move it into the game room. And uh, I think I had that in the video, I had the last step that I was worried about into the game room, and I just took a piece of half-inch plywood and just plopped it there, and no problem at all. So I don't need to worry about 
uh, pneumatic tires versus solid tires. Thing came right in and I was able to put the Gibbs in place, so everything worked out great. Um, the other thing that I was struggling with was the skew, right? So the dolly as it's going down or up the stairs, it's kind of going all over the place. It's, it's moving you know, around. And I think I figured out what the problem is. And so here's my little diagram that shows, oh, hold on, I just lost, there we go. So this is a little picture that shows you know, my dolly. Make sure I'm in frame here, right like there. And it's got this, uh, the axle, which is where I'm clamping onto, and it's also got, you know, some other bars that I didn't put in. But what's happening is if I secure the, uh, the uh, hook here and the cable to my dolly, as it's sliding down, it's doing this, right? This whole thing is kind of moving side to side. And yes, the stairs might be, you know, a little off and the whole game might be sliding. But what I'm seeing mostly, and if you see in the video, it's kind of doing this action. So what I realize is if I just take advantage of this here, and if I just put a little hook in place, let me draw this off camera one second. So if I were to just draw a little, or weld onto rather, if I were to weld a little hook here, all right, an open-ended hook, I guess all hooks are open-ended, aren't they? And head it like this, and then as I send the game down, I can literally just hook it in place, and then this whole thing will be one unit. Now, now this thing may still, if I can hold this here, thing may still slide this way, but it's not going to be able to, you know what I mean, it's not going to be able to do this business. And that was really what was causing this thing to get, go off the rails and, and get all skewed and everything. So anyway, long story short, I'll do that uh, off uh, camera. And then I think if you guys ever see it again, then hopefully, you know, it'll be dialed in and, and working as expected. So I guess that's it. So thanks so much for watching, guys. If you like this kind of stuff, seeing me build crazy things or whatever, then go ahead and subscribe. Or if you like the board repairs and all that business too, uh, we got plenty of boards that I got to repair, so you'll be tons of videos coming your way. So thanks again for everything, guys. God bless, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. And hey, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other videos on arcade game repair. Oh, seriously?